Exhausted but satisfied, I return to the expo grounds. I enjoy the brief respite between expedition and it was time to start another expedition together. In the days leading up to my expedition, rumors had been circulating about new islands that had been found, similar to the one Malin had stumbled upon. Sifting through these rumors, I planned my course based on those that seemed the most likely to contain grains of truth. We're a cartographer. We and our company decided to go for trials and triangulations. Or maybe the Golden Pyramid, that was said to be easier. Rumors tell of a pyramid made of solid gold. Truly, it would be a glorious to discover such a thing. Yes, that is maybe the better choice for us. We were not that experienced. We would choose the Taishi Academy coming naturally to a cartographer like us. The night before I was to depart, the streets of Paris were awash with a flickering light of street lamps as I made my way to the bar. As I sipped my drink that evening, I was approached by Wong Fei Hung, the legendary Chinese physician and martial artist. I seek the knowledge of the great wide world. Starstruck, I chatted with a celebrity about inconsequential things for a while before he introduced the topic of the disappearing islands. I smiled and deflected, pretending I knew nothing. Fei Hung pressed harder, but I would not reveal Malin's secrets to a complete stranger. Eventually, he grew impatient in face of my evasions and bid me good night, striding off with an air of irritation. Eccentric fellow, if I say so myself. Let's take it to the Let's take to the seas. As I neared the site of the expedition, a small supply ship pulled alongside. The Taishi Academy had provided me with a modest budget to outfit my trek. The shopkeeper hailed me loudly and handed over a small package, a gift from Nalin for my first solo expedition. I was sure it would prove useful. We got a first aid kit, a torch and five chocolates. This is our trek. This is me, Rushdi Shaman, creating maps. And <clears throat> we're famous for cartography. Kizia Young, a Roma trader, a little bit scared of heights. That would help us haggling. Homie, an islander. With a little bit of a drinking habit. Still, we could see more and better because of him. And Henri Durand, from Paris. A street rat who can steal a little bit. With an artful dodge and a little bit mercurial and also able to deflect attention from the Allies. We were only armed with a machete, decreasing the jungle cost as well. Let's buy provisions from the Taishi Academy, we, sh we said, and uh, found that Vigor Tonic was really at a good price there, a Theodolite. A tool used for doing surveys on unexplored land, granting insight into the terrain in a given direction, was also what we wanted to take, as it was on a great sail. Of course, we would also need other things to survive there. Maybe a shovel or two. Maybe a torch or two. Before, before it all, chocolate, 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 and a little bit of whiskey to boot. Hmm. Maybe torches, rather. We struck a deal. My provisions chosen, I considered if there was yet more to be done before I landed on the island. 
You are probably good. And began our journey. Ancient legends told of a great golden temple on the island that loomed ahead, a massive ancient thing and made of pure gold. We were to find this legendary structure, adding to the already substantial honor of the Taishi Academy. We sailed through calm seas, arriving on an island that was unknown to us. We saw mountains and looked at the coast and saw a lagoon. What would we find there, was the question. We went on. And found an old campsite. I approached the remains of an old campsite, apparently once erected by a failed expedition. The few mortal remains were long rotten, but I felt danger in the air. Hmm. We would search the camp with a torch. I stopped the trek to begin a thorough search of the camp. Ignoring the risk, I searched the camp thoroughly, uncovering an assortment of valuable goods. We found a strange smoke satchel, loosely bl packed black powder, that we could burn to create thick smoke and hide from enemy eyes, and a collection of rare and valuable jewels. We would take it all. We heard of some, some butterflies in the vicinity that we really wanted to visit. There was also something else that was luring us there. We went onward, trying to catch the animals. And we found Young's wonder poisonous moth. From from afar we saw something curious. Footsteps led to a place in the thick jungle. We ate some chocolate to refresh ourselves and went onward. Could approach a shrine and did so subsequently. The temple before us warranted both fear and respect. Tendrils of a dark purple fog that we already feared swirled about, much like the mysterious mists that surrounded the island. Damaged statues featured the temple that was covered in writings that we could not understand. We entered the shrine and went into a small purple chamber. A long hallway led to the altar room. My eyes flitted to and fro, searching for traps. We wanted to search for secrets. And indeed, would find something knocking on the walls. I noticed that one section echoed with a hollow resonance. Upon inspection, I found a subtle slab door leading to a second chamber that we opened. I took all of my strength, but I managed to move the great slab to one side. Wiping sweat from my brow, I cautiously entered the small doorway and entered a small room adorned with religious implements. Looking through the ceremonial ornaments, I noticed something that seemed to hold real value. We would take it. A silver goblet and a tribal artifact that we could study to learn more about the ways of this tribe. I stuffed my plundered treasure into a satchel 
and return to the entry chamber. We would look at the altar chamber as well. A thin layer of mysterious fog hid the base from the altar. I fear that disturbing the treasure would cause the fog to spread. We investigated the altar, saw a golden goblet and a silver vase, but would not take anything and leave that in peace. Decided it was better not to disturb the shrine further and quickly departed. We were overburdened and had to get rid of something. We wanted to study the tribal artifact. I smiled. As I examined the artifact, it portrayed a tribe of simple herders that relied on their livestock for the necessities of life. We needed to look into our provisions and what to still use and what to leave behind. It was a tough decision to make. Hmm. We dropped the torch. It wasn't the most valuable thing to leave behind. And try to reveal something more. The Theodolite. Very interesting. We went to travel at the coast, even though we knew that further north there was something more to be discovered. But we wanted more. eating vigorously on our chocolate because we wanted to stay we wanted to stay as sane as we could and took even a whiskey to finish going to feel that tomorrow we went to go north Through the grasslands and through the jungle we went, looking around as we found a small dilapidated shack that we entered subsequently. I encountered a warm, poorly constructed hut in the wilderness. A desperate looking man peered out at me, his palely emaciated form sparking pity. Man entreated me pitifully, he had thought to find riches in this land, but now was trapped and desperate. Any help we could give would be a godsend. But uh, apparently we nearly had nothing ourselves. So we went on hearing from him about natives that were nearby. We went to meet them. They called themselves the Islanders. Encountered a small hunting party in the wild. They approached cautiously, spares at the ready, radiating suspicion. I felt pinned by their stares. Perhaps they had never seen a Westerner before. The leader demanded to know what our intentions were. We would offer to help. And... Uh, with the help of, hopefully, a good drink, we rolled on and were successful. They welcomed me to their hunt and I proved myself valuable when I managed to take down a wild animal on the run. They cheered my success and we shared the spoils of the hunt. The hunter stood stoically before me as I considered what to do next. They were clearly eager to keep moving. 
We asked them where their village was. They told me of the nearest settlement, giving detailed directions for the route. I thanked them and carefully updated my map. The hunters did not watch, want to tarry further. They disappeared silently into the wilds, and soon it was as if they had never been there at all. Their village was nearby, and so we made haste to arrive there. In hope to trade something. We approached a friendly village. So we entered the village, and a missionary informed me that the chieftain was awaiting my visit. I would truly anger her if I did not come. The villagers gave me a warm welcome, inviting me to freely partake of their hospitality. And we would uh, meet with a ruler that was expecting us. A wall of alcoholic fumes hit me. As I entered the room, the chieftain sat hunched over a clay vessel, staring into the drink. She staggered to her feet as I entered. She stared at me blearily, demanding to know why I was here. As I stammered an answer, she cut me off with a gesture. The chieftain was in a foul mood and would only tolerate one request. Yeah, we would ask for a quest. I inquired if there was anything I could do to help the village and the yeah, kind of run-down chieftain. I was told of a relic of religious significance that had been stolen long ago. They had a map, but I would need to dig it up. We would accept. I was given a map and a shovel and instructed to take the greatest of care. The relic was of great importance, and they prayed for its safe return to the village. I thanked the chieftain for their time and made my exit. I emerged from the hut, blinking rapidly as my eyes adjusted to the light outside. We would look to trade. Hmm. Found they were selling a, a leather girdle for protection and some hard cheese. We were looking forward to. We wondered how they had made the cheese here, but nevertheless, we're happy that this was doable for us. We went on to trade a bit. Hmm. Thought about the leather girdle, but ultimately decided to not take it. Cheese had to get us through. Came to an agreement with the islanders. And, uh, <laughs> Our street rat couldn't do else than to try to steal something. Henri Durand flashed a grin and revealed what he had taken. I had to admire his skill. It seemed that the theft had gone unnoticed. I stashed our ill-gotten loot, pondered what to do next. We traded. We traded for it. We would sell them their own horse hides. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing a little bit about it. But still, it would be for the good of the expedition. Hmm. Spiked club. A leather girdle. Would be something we would very much desire. And that was also what we acquired there, as it was a specialty of the tribe and made in great numbers.
translator had learned a lot. Pondered about what would go for next. We decided to rest in the village for a while. To recover. In a quiet moment around the fire, a villager approached me with a, with a question. What was more important for our people, honor or kindness? We were a kind bunch. Not worries. They smiled warmly at my answer, patting my shoulder affectionately, and we slept. Spent some quiet days at the village. Thinking about the stolen relic. Henri Durand said he should have stolen it himself. We decided to rest again, even if that meant to overstay our welcome a bit, but sleep was impossible that night as some blasted village man kept up a, of a constant off-tune humming of some local so a song. We would ignore it in the name of uh, courtesy, but that one night was lost. At least we had recovered a little more and could continue our quest. The islanders remained kind, but there was an undercurrent of distrust. For the crew to pack and headed out as new adventurers were waiting, the villagers stared as I departed. Now we looked at the map and where we could find what they would seek. looked again and again if we would find the place they described but we had not yet found anything like that it was apparently near an island that was in a river and near a mountain We looked and looked. Hmm. It was something very special with a with a with a mountain and a hill to boot. We would have to explore further to find out where it would lead us. That meant going west. But where to? We went into one direction. was apparently a shrine nearby and a trader. We went to the shrine and approached it, looking for something to give to the trader. I arrived at a long forgotten shrine in the distance. I spied large jagged boulders like the peaks of mountains ready to erupt from the earth. We entered the shrine. Inside was a small shadowy chamber. A long hallway led to the altar room ahead. I would have to be careful of traps there. We looked for secrets. Hopeful. And we found, in a shadowy alcove, I noticed a brief glint of light shining from the gloom. Treasure! We were excited. We found gold nuggets and another tribal artifact. Stashed the treasure and considered my options. Enter the altar chamber to have a look at the sacred altar room. Strange hieroglyphs indicated that taking the treasure here would cause great mountains to burst from the earth. We investigated the altar, and there was gold galore, but we left it there, out of respect and fear. We backed away and left the temple. 
and we had to look again and calculate what we would keep and what we would not keep. We studied the tribal artifact. Then went on to devour some cheese. We looked around us if we could maybe find the mountain and indeed there was a mountain in the vicinity. That was resembling the exact spot that we had seen on the map. Here. We had to dig there. Digging into the soft earth, I soon made a discovery. Treasure! Opening an old rotten chest, I found the village's religious artifact inside. We were overburdened a bit. So we went to eat a lot of chocolate and decided to visit the trader that we had seen from afar. We approached him. To my surprise, I encountered a colorfully dressed, wandering trader. He was bowed beneath a heavy packer, but cheerfully greeted me with a wave. I retried something. Having a good chance. He said he would try for, for something. Henri Durand flashed a grin and revealed what he had taken. I had to admire his skill. It seemed that the theft had gone unnoticed. Stashed our ill-gotten loot and pondered what to do next. We traded then. He proudly presented us with a selection of his wares. It seemed that he had somehow acquired goods from the west out here in the wilds. We would barter for them. Another Theodolite. <laughs> and some dynamite even was on the loose here. We looked around what we would take. The artifacts would be great to take home, but on the other hand, they weighed a lot and some gold nuggets were a much better deal for us. Colorful marbles would ensure that we could trade something with the natives. There was also some cheap dynamite to have at this trader. And uh, some food cans for the worst of times. We sold him more shovels and he gave us some more cans. All in all, this was a very good deal for us. I ventured into the wilderness once more. Go to the village and bring the relic back. I visit the, visited the village once more. The islanders observed me with caution, gave me a formal welcome. Then we gave them the mask. The village ruler thanked me solemnly as I presented the lost relic. I saw tears of strong emotion in her eyes as I turned to leave. We got a, we got a fantastic spiked club. For all that we did, I emerged from the hut, blinking rapidly as my eyes adjusted to the light outside. 
We looked around and talked about who would take the club. And maybe our cartographer, um, our our trader, she was very loyal to us, would take the thing. Simple but brutally effective. And we also wanted to trade as the marbles would be a great thing to have for the Aborigines. There was another spiked club to have, but that was a little bit too much. Hmm. Animal teeth. Ah, another spiked club would be able to help us greatly, so we looked around if we could maybe do something there. We sold them some dynamite to boot and dealt with it then. I reached a deal with the villagers. Street Rat also got a spiked club for our defense. We didn't want to give it to the Islander Scout as he was angry with us because we had no alcohol to boot. Then we wanted to rest again. I told the team to unpack our things and prepare for the night. I was eager to find out more about how this tribe arrived on the Curious Islands and spent the night talking around the campfire. It was hard to keep a history of these ever-shifting islands, and so they relied on myths and legends told over and over again. I wondered whether there was any truth to them. And we looked to the stars while we slept. I recovered in the village for nearly a week. I was treated as a welcome guest. You all sleep well, I asked, and then we went on to new adventures. The villagers seemed indifferent to our departure, even though they waved and said, Yuto Favuba. We were told of a great hyena that would um, watch over a mysterious plateau. Fearless, we went onward. To the hills and far away. We found some springs, but first we wanted to fight the hyena. It was actually two hyenas, very dangerous beasts. We were very alert. Hmm. I wanted to go for some wigger. <coughs> Tried what we could. Still, there was not much to do. Thinking about flanking someone. It 
So we did it. for a great attack distracted the hyenas and dodged artfully mm. Attacked vigorously by the beasts. Still, we tried our best. Use the dynamite to decimate them. Drank some more tonic to avoid the worst. Poisoned. They died and we looted what we could find. Valuable pelts, animal teeth, and some raw meat that would help us through our journey. We approached the, sh the springs in hope to heal and rest for a while. We settled down for the evening. This was a good place, and I was sure I would get some well-deserved rest there. Homie was in the mood for talking. We spent the evening chatting about various topics, and I had the chance to find a little more about him. You'll ask about that childhood. Homie told me of his favorite childhood meal, and how its heavy deep-fried smell still brought happy memories. Oh, yeah. Good times. What Mama did cook. The healing waters had soothed both body and soul. Mist lay heavily on the ground as I woke. And we left. Recovered. Ooh, the fear of heights was very serious about our friends. Gave Henri a little bit more to think about. Then we went on through the jungle to discover another shrine. Still wanted to find the pyramid, but now it was time for a stone statue. Discovered a meticulously carved idol, its ghastly visage twisted into a cruel grimace. The great thing filled with, with dread and curiosity in equal measure. Notice the collection of offerings that have been placed here by some unknown islanders. We would examine them to see if we had something useful there. But ultimately decided we would not take them away from the islanders. Um... We inquired if we would leave an offering. And left our hyena pelts there. I placed my offering at the base of the statue. A wave of peace washed over me. And I knew that my sacrifice had been worth the cost.
we went forward to the west of the island. Through the strange jungles. And from afar we would see a pyramid. Still we were eager to look for a little bit more. Was there something still beneath the hills? We would dare to travel there. And approach the shaman hut. Approach the dark and crumbling hut. A shaman beckoned us inside, surrounded by an assortment of occult accoutrements. We would... Yeah, a street rat tried to steal again and was ultimately very successful in it. Henri Durand flashed a grin and revealed what he had taken. I had to admire his skill. It seemed that the theft had gone unnoticed. We found an island and trinket. I stashed our ill-gotten loot and pondered what to do next. We looked at the trinket. And it would... Uh, yeah, we couldn't give it to someone yet. So we asked the shaman for a cleansing. But for whom? For Kizia? For Homi? Cleansing for Kizia would be something with, what we would uh, admire. So the shaman was willing to offer his services. He promised that after his ritual, the patient would be cured of any disorders. And he just wanted one animal tooth for it. Wow. Uh, so we asked for help for Kizia. When the ritual was finally over, we helped Kizia to her feet. We would ask for another cleansing, too. Uh, that was not so easily acquired, though. And so... Uh, we rather wanted to trade. Got out a small crate and presented his wares. Another islander trinket here, a horn flute. That would be able to lift our mood but draw attention. Hmm. And another islander trinket. That could be of great help to us. Hmm. We looked at his wares and pondered. Maybe two horn flutes, we asked. Some negotiating. I made a deal with the shaman. And we left his hut. It's some of the delicious food cans and played the horn flute. Finally wanted to give the trinkets to Kizia, so she was no longer angry. And also uh, to Homi. as he was also under heavy duress. He clasped my hand warmly a tear in his eye. 
Then we went to the Great Pyramid that we had seen before. We approached on our 173rd day. The pyramid shined with a golden gleam. There was a strange quality to its architecture that I had never seen before. We entered the pyramid and celebrated. All was bare inside the temple, but scorch marks showed the signs of a long ago struggle. Intriguing. The pyramid beckoned. We had surveyed everything. We looked at the map again to see what we had discovered. A beautiful island from which we, though, returned home. The Taishi Academy celebrated with us. And fame and glory awaited. An academy master was interested in our group. And we would have to see what we would learn. Something about negotiation, increasing the budget for expedition provisions. Some impetus, reducing the base sanity cost for traveling. Or the surveyor's eye. We thought long and hard and thought that some negotiation skills would indeed be a great boon to us. Upon my return to Paris, a street urchin delivered a note from Malin, asking to meet in her office at the rear of the Boussol Cassé Tavern. Hello Malin. I entered Victoria's office the ranch time and found her waiting impatiently. As I told her of my journey, her eyes shone with excitement. I have news. She peppered me with questions, intense in her hunger, to learn every detail of my expedition. Hours passed before she was satisfied. Eventually she revealed that she'd been collecting reports and that the machine we had found on that first island seemed particularly important. She needed to go, but pressed a handful of expo tickets into my hand as she escorted me out of her office. These were good as gold in this area, particularly at the Explorer Clubs. Look around if we could recru recruit anyone. I gave word that I was looking for brave souls to join my expedition. Soon I had gathered a small set of candidates to choose from. A cook, that would come in really handy. An academy master. Creating scrolls. Or a British soldier come in handy when fighting. Hmm. Maybe the Academy Master would be the right one to join us. Sang Wei. Did I truly want to recruit him? They asked me. Yes, we wanted to do that. So Wei had been informed of my services to the club and was eager to explore the islands together. I stepped again into the thrum of construction of the exposition. The constant activity was invigorating. And here we relaxed and wanted to make a pause until we would meet again. I closed the diary that I was currently writing and said thank you for watching and happy gaming to you. We'll see each other in the next episode. Have a great time until then. This is Immanuel Kahn, signing out.